This one is very interesting. So this is the Islander Amerigraph. I think is what we're calling it. This is the ISL202. I think there's two other colorways as well. This one has a full loomed BGW9 dial and a black PVD coating on the watch. So very cool contrast, very stark and uh, looks great on the wrist. You know, with the pop of the red and the fact that it's uh, it's American assembled. So it's assembled in the USA and it has an American or USA made quartz chronograph movement. Pretty dang cool. All of that for a price point of three right now on the website at Islander Watch. I'll put a link in the description. Is $399, so just under $400. Case size, 41 millimeter. Lug to lug, 46.8. 14.2 thick. Single dome sapphire crystal. You can see the deflection there off that crystal. 20 millimeter lug width here. In between these liar lugs, like that. And the bracelet tapers down to 18. Pretty standard affair here. Three micro adjust on that clasp. Screw pins for this thing. And a 6.4 millimeter push-pull crown. And then of course we have the pushers here. Now this chronograph runs a little bit different than a standard chronograph. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, take a closer look at that. Uh, some people, I think it was on the live show I did, they had pointed out, I think there's a couple other brands that have models of chronographs that run like this. Because this is currently... This is actually the seconds hand, not the chronograph hand. These are your chronograph subdials down here. This is a 24 hour register here. So if we click the chronograph to start, it actually starts down here at the six o'clock subdial, counting the seconds. And then over at the nine o'clock, it's gonna count the minutes. So you always have this long, it's, you can easily reference the time or seconds if you will, because it's, viewed as a standard three-hand watch in most cases until you want to operate the chronograph and then you use the subdials. I think it's kind of slick. I like it. I mean, I'm good with chronographs using the, in this case, seconds hand as a chronograph hand and then the, the subdials, the seconds, running seconds. I just didn't pick up on that right away. Like legit, when I first opened it, I went to go try to stop it and then reset it and then I realized what was going on. So, pretty cool. You can see there's AR coating on that crystal. This is a non-rotating bezel, so it's a fixed bezel. Showing the uh, 24 hours on that plus side. Check this out though. Very cool display case back on this. Legit, I, I, I really like that part of it. I don't know why. Because typically that's reserved for automatic movements because you can see gears and springs and rotating parts and all that good stuff. But in this case, you see none of that. Rather, you see um, not really circuitry, but you see some coils and you see at least three jewels that I can spot. There's five jewels in this movement. And then you can see the battery compartment there. It uses a SR920SW or a, a 371 cell will work as well in this thing. Um, and it's a large display too, so you see the entire movement. It is a larger movement. You can see it fills that space nice. I really dig it. 100 meter water resist, all labeled on there. They even have, uh, up the top here, they even have the USA flag laser engraved on there. Nice little touch. I think that's uh, some sort of logo there, maybe from the movement or something. I'm not sure what that is. Is that some sort of space module or something? I don't know what that is. I think it's a great looking watch. So here's what it looks like on the reset. Just sweeps right on back. Seconds hand keeps ticking away. Let's zoom back out. Let's pop this on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. All of the information details will be down below in the description. Looks, wears, feels great. No issues at all. Shorter links. So three micro adjust is plenty. You can see it's all individually pieced. So it's a very flexible bracelet. But those shorter links allows you to get a good fit, you know. So you don't need four micro adjust here. Three are adequate for when you have, uh, you know, you can size this up or down and get it dialed in pretty easily. All 
All right, let's kill the lights. First, I'm gonna give it a quick blast with the UV light. BGW9 sometimes needs a little more oomph. It's still plenty bright, but it's not as um, intense as, say, uh, um, like a C3 loom or something like that. Uh, that looks fantastic. I I don't want to say I'm a sucker for full loom dials because I really only have, I think, one right now. But um, it could be difficult for me to turn one down sort of thing. Like I'm drawn to it more so than a non-full loom dial, if that makes sense. They just look fantastic. Thanks for watching, guys. Big thanks to the entire crew and Mark over at Islander Watch who sent this over for me to uh, video and wear at the San Francisco wind-up show.